welcome back friends uh, in this video tutorial we are going to learn about the recombination by serine recombinases and serine recombinases are the important proteins which are necessary for the site specific recombination uh, process right now in this case as we know the serine uh, is having the side chain of uh, CH2OH and it is having the OH group at its uh, R group position so this OH and uh, as, the, as it is a hydroxyl group the O that means uh, in this case uh, the the oxygen of this hydroxyl group can serve as uh, the nucleophile and it will act like a nucleophile it can attack the phosphate or uh, alpha phosphate groups in this case and this kind of targeting is really really important and handy and in this kind of reactions we will going we are going to see it later okay now let us talk about yeah now let us take me a color okay now here if we think about the structure of the gene in this case so this is suppose uh, the this two are the strands two are the dnas and both of the dnas have having two strands and uh, these two DNA are destined to uh, make a recombination event between themselves via the site specificity so they must conserve a site now in this case they are having that site so this region these two regions or colored regions in, in the topmost so I can call it stand 1 I can call it stand 2 now in stand 1 uh, the, uh, the regions is, uh, are, is colored with uh, blue and strand uh, and in DNA 2 we have colored it with red now this uh, colored regions in both uh, these DNAs uh, are uh, recombines uh, are the site for recombinase recognition they are called the recombinase recognition sites and also there is a stretch of nucleotide sequences in between this colored region which is separating these two colored region they are called a crossing over region or crossover site now this crossover region is the important region where uh, where the DNA will be cleaved and uh, will be rejoined and these sites are, are the colored region which is called the recombinase recom recognition site is can uh, can only serve as the recognition of uh, this recombination event and this recognition can be done by the kind of protein that that is in encoded previously and those protein in this case are the serine recombinases now as the name suggests this recombinase have multiple tasks they can cut uh, the DNA strand they can reseal the DNA strand and all they can do with the help of their hydroxyl group in the extra R site and that that's why that is really really important in this case now let's begin the replication uh, sorry recombination stages in the first step there is a process called cleavage in this cleavage this serine recombinase uh, will uh, recognize the recombinase recognition sites it will bind with the recombinase recognition site in in the first strand we've talked about we called it R1 and R2 in the second strand we call it R3 and R4. Now all these, all of them are the serine recombinases. They are having the affinity of particular site that is called the recombinase recognition site. Now right after the recognition, uh, right after the recognition, they start to attack the strand at a particular nucleotide sequence and cleave the strand in both the cases. So uh, right after the cleavage of the strand, what what they do in this case they just take the phosphate they they make a bond with themselves with the phosphate of uh, of uh, the, of the five prime phosphates in both the strands you can see and they left the three prime hydroxyl group in both the strands that is really really important because remember in case of the homologous recombination model uh, the very important step is to generate uh, the three prime overhang because three prime hydroxyl is the only way uh, to start the DNA polymerization process okay so in this case what they are doing they are taking out the phosphate with them and they are ma they are leaving this hydroxyl as uh, as as it's their own and this hydroxyl hydroxyl will serve as a nucleophile the oxygen of the hydroxyl will serve as a nucleophile and it can attack uh, the phosphate and then finally can reseal itself on its own right so they are taking it down like that and right after that what will happen uh, in both the strands these things happen right after this uh, as we know both of these DNA strands are split together then these two strands can be shuffled with each other so this strand goes up way and upper strand goes lower way and this shuffling is really important because that's where the recombination takes place and then right after this uh, DNA swap or DNA shuffling uh, this red uh, will bind with blue and the blue will bind with red in the opposite way and they also shuffle their uh, this uh, serine recombinases as a result of the DNA sh shuffling okay the actually there is no difference in the serine recombinases uh, which are bound to uh, DNA 1 or DNA 2 they are all same but we have colored them differently because to distinguish them from one another okay so that's not uh, do, don't confuse it okay so right after the swap of the DNA what they can do again uh, as I've told this 
oxygen of the hydroxyl group will attack the phosphate and release the pho uh, and cleave it and then finally it will reseal this nix and right after the resealing we form something some some strands like that which are having the multiple patches and that's why they are called uh, the recombined products or recombinant products and uh, serine recombinants uh, is very very responsible for doing all these things right okay so if you want to know about uh, this process of uh, nucleophilic attack in detail uh, let let us move on to the top layer okay let us move on to the top uh where is it yeah this is the place where it is de defined very carefully now let me take the color again and i'll discuss it okay now here you can see this is uh, the recombinase enzyme and this recombinase enzyme is having the serine at the active site and the serine is having the hydroxyl group uh, on the, on the side chain or the R chain and the oxygen of the hydroxyl is a very very nucleophile in this case it will attack uh, the phosphodiester bond as we know if this is the DNA strand and this is uh, for example and this is uh, the serine for example serine recombinase uh, as, uh, as we have seen it will make a bond with it and you have a phosphate and it will take the phosphate away that means the serine is attacking on the phosphodiester backbone of the DNA strand now as you can see in this case this is uh, the phosphodiester backbone uh, which is schematically presented here now uh, this oxygen will attack the phosphate between these two sugars and right after the attack of the phosphate it will drag this phosphate towards itself because of its high uh, high nucleus affinity uh, high nucleophile at affinity right after that it will take it away and it will leave uh, this this part of the strand away and the hydroxyl of this strand uh, will stay on its own so what will generate it will generate 3 prime hydroxyl and a 5 prime and a 5 prime phosphate which is attached with this serine hydroxyl okay or the, or the serine recombinase then then right after that swapping events is done and right after the swapping events when they need to reseal the nick what will they do the 3 prime hydroxyl again in this case serve as uh, the oxygen of the 3 prime hydroxyl serve as the nucleophile it will attack this phosphate and right after the attack of this phosphate it will release this and right after that the serine again released as it is and it will generate uh, the, the the ending and joining of these two sugars with the help of the phosphate that means it will reseal the nick it will recreate the phosphodiester linkage and that the by by the means the, it will produce uh, the DNA strands intact so so by doing this uh, so in the very first step what what it is doing it is breaking a bond it is breaking the phosphodiester bond so we as we know for breaking any bond uh, and from making any bond we need different types of energies right for the first time when it breaks the bond it stores some energy and the second time when it needs to form the bond it utilizes that energy to form the bond so in this case it is only the phosphodiester bond which is being broken and then which is being sealed so the only one type of bond is break broken and sealed so that means we do not need any extra amount of energy because this is only bond breaking and bond making so the, the energy w is utilized in all these cases the energy stored in in bond mm, breaking is utilized in the bond making so we do not need any su source of energy from the outside in all these steps right so that's a very important consideration that's how it's done and uh, I hope it will help you. Thank you.